Hello everybody, this is Jade Simmons. Come on in for another episode of Get Your Designer Life. I think we're at episode five now, can you believe it? So I'm so thrilled for a number of reasons. I'm gonna try my best not to make all the big announcements before everybody gets on, but come on in. I do like to get started as soon as possible. This is a loaded episode. We are talking about preparation. One of my favorite topics. I've noticed that all of my favorite topics start with a P. So passion, purpose, power, positioning. But tonight we are talking about preparation. So I want you to come in, get settled in, get your notes, whatever you like to do. Make sure you share this. If you know anybody who is preparing for something, don't leave them hanging. Let them in on this because we are talking about preparing, not like everybody else prepares, but preparing in an uncommon way. Hey, Mayan, come on in. Make sure you share this, Mayan, because I know that you and your friends are preparing constantly for your next big thing. Some of us are preparing for everyday life just to be able to slay every day. But I want to talk to you about the habit, the lifestyle of preparation. So come on in. This is the fifth episode of Get Your Designer Life. My name is Jade Simmons, and we are talking tonight about the power of uncommon preparation. Prep mode for what is what we're talking about. So I want to jump in and tell you a few things that are very important. Maya, you can help me out with this. I want you to type in designergrowthclub.com because today, Finally today, we officially opened the doors to the Designer Growth Club. That is my new purpose baby. It's this thing I have been birthing for a while now, and it's simply my way of being able to plug in on an ongoing basis to visionary women who are on the move and looking to accomplish big things in record time. So we are teaching the strategy behind creating back-to-back -back breakthrough. Many of you know that I love to say we have not been designed to have one big break. I don't believe that we are here to be one hit wonders in life. So if you've ever been wondering if the biggest accomplishment of your life is behind you, or if you are wondering if you have missed your moment, hey Denise, come on in. If you are wondering if it's not your season, maybe it's not your time, let me just tell you right away, it is always your time and you are always in season. You're like a perennial fruit, right? That never gets old, never gets moldy. Hey, Patches, come on in, good to see you here. Who is this, Lanshi Lemon, good evening. Good to have you on. We're talking about preparation. Hey, Tina, you guys are saying congrats to me. I wanna say congrats to you. Designer Growth Club is about you. It is not about me. It is about plugging into visionary women who are ready to do big things, believe bigger, think bigger, be, behave bolder. So if you go visit it tonight, this is the full website. All the details you guys have been asking about are there. You'll find out how Designer Growth Cub works. You'll find out how it's structured. But today is the day that we've officially opened the doors and we begin the journey on October 1st. So you have got to sign up, breathe, believe, and buckle up before the 20th, because you'll see when you get on there, the subscription goes up. But tonight is not about pitching and plugging anything. You can go to the website and see everything you need to see. I believe that in this season, we don't have to sell stuff to you. You know what you need in your life. You know what's missing. You know what would set you on fire. So I believe when you run into that thing, you know. Nobody has to convince you or manipulate you. That's right, we are sisters. Patches is one of the new members of Designer Growth Club. Let me just tell you, I've been seeing the women who've been signing up and one of the big desires of my hearts was that Designer Growth Club would be a diverse program, a diverse organization. And so to see already that the lineup is made of women from all walks of life, women from oh my gosh, a variety of careers and women who are all looking to do big things, but their big things and their breakthrough looks different. So if you wanna be a part of that, check it out, designergrowthclub.com. We'll wait on you until October 1st when the journey starts. Speaking of starting the journey, we're gonna to start tonight's journey if you haven't done so already. Share, if you know someone who is preparing for anything, preparing to transition from career to calling, if they are preparing uh, for a new job, preparing to launch something, 
they need to see this. Let me tell you what, you need to be preparing every day. So anybody you know who's still alive probably needs to see this episode. We're gonna jump right in. I'm so glad that you're proud, Patches. That's the right way you should be feeling. I'm proud and honored that you're a part of what we're doing. All right, we're talking about prep mode. Why are we talking about preparation? I believe that we as human beings are always preparing, always preparing for level next. So if you say you want more, then you're gonna find you're supposed to always be preparing. Now, as a musician, uh, hey Lawrence, another musician just joined. He understands what I mean when I say musicians get this. If we only prepared right before a concert, we would never be ready. So we spend hours a day practicing to get ready for concerts that are months away, sometimes even a year away, we start practicing today because we know that it's gonna take some time to be ready to walk on the stage and own it. So what we're talking about today is that if you're looking for any breakthrough in any area of your life, you must be prepared. So we're gonna talk about how to prepare when you don't even know what you're preparing for. And I promised that I would spill the beans about how I prepare, which I believe is very different. And it's one of the reasons I've seen um, uncommon success in my various career field. So I'm going to spill those beans because I believe in transparency. I don't think we should keep secrets for ourselves like that. If we figure out what success looks like, we should share it. So, hey, sweetie, my beloved husband just joined and he always says that I never pay attention to him when he comes on Facebook Live. So I like to just take a little extra time on each of these episodes to just embarrass him a little bit by saying, I see you, baby. I see you. So he's on. Uh, tonight, and even in the room with me, I'm very excited because my superstar cousin Paisley is also here. She might make a guest appearance because she knows a little bit of something about preparation. She's a big time producer for a big name news company right here in Houston. So preparation. Here's the big golden ticket, big nugget you need to take home. Every breakthrough, every last breakthrough will be, must be preceded by preparation. So I have proof. I don't say anything to you without proof. I've usually lived it if I'm talking to you about it now. I can tell you that anytime there's been a big jump in career success for me, in personal success, personal breakthrough, I can look back and track it to an entire season of preparation that preceded it. Here's the thing though, there's two ways to see this. You can either be completely oblivious about the fact that you are being prepared for something and then it just feels like you're going through hard times. Hey B, come on in. It just feels like uh, you're in a season of self-pity, right? All, all these trials are coming my way, what's happening? Well, you're being prepared, you're being refined. But if you're oblivious to the fact that preparation always precedes breakthrough, you're gonna be thinking that whatever you're going through is a mistake that uh, you have no understanding of what's actually being done for you. You're gonna see everything is happening to you. Why is this happening to me? But if you get that you're being prepared, you understand it's happening for you. If you don't get this, what happens is you miss your moment. Remember I said earlier, some of you might be worried you're missing your moment. You miss the moment to be prepared for the big break. So that's one of the negative things that happens if you don't understand that we should be constantly preparing. Now, the flip side of that is you can be in agreement with the preparation. And then what happens is you start to take cues from your own desires. You'll go, you know what? If I am all of a sudden dreaming about big breakthrough in my business, if I am all of a sudden imagining my future soulmate, it must be on the horizon, which must mean I must need to prepare in a certain way to be ready to meet that moment. See, I believe that in our lives, we're being approached by various moments and opportunities on an ongoing basis. But I think for the most part, many of us don't see them coming, so we miss them. So what happens now is when you understand that preparation is a lifestyle, you start to pick up on the patterns of how you uniquely are designed to prepare. Thanks for sharing. Those of you who've been sharing, I've been saying, if you know anybody who's preparing for something big, don't let them miss out on this episode. So why do we need to constantly be preparing? Most of us think we just prepare right before we get ready for something. I say you have to constantly prepare because you're constantly asking for something. You're constantly asking for the next big break. You're constantly desiring something new. 
You can't have it both ways. You can't always want something new and then think you just sit back and wait on it to happen. You have to know that as soon as you have a want or a desire, you have to immediately begin preparing to receive and expect what you say you want. I am always astonished. I know some of you who are on here, hey Nicole, some of you who are on here are coaches. Some of you are ministers. Some of you are teachers. So you know there is a huge difference, gap I should say, between what people say they want and what they're willing to do to get what they want. Anybody know what I'm talking about? A huge gap, right? People will say, I want a flat stomach. I'm joking because my cousin's in the room. <laughs> and we always talk about the six packs that we want. But it's funny, we'll have that conversation over some barbecue and some cake and ice cream. We're not serious. You see what I'm saying? When you're serious, your words and your actions start to line up with what you say you want and you prepare. Yes, Maya, the future drops hints. The past provides really great clues as well. So usually, I, I really believe this, if you think about how your life has unfolded, you'll find certain patterns. Hey, Daryl, come on in. You'll find certain patterns of how you've always been being prepared. But can I tell you that most people will live and die without recognizing those patterns. So here's what happens is when you know you need to constantly prepare, if you're always asking for next, you have to constantly prepare for next. Next always requires new, period, point blank. Next always requires new. Whatever you want next is gonna require new mindset, bigger belief system, and a new mode of operation every single time. You cannot have something new and bigger and not take with you a new and bigger version of yourself. Hey, Paul, my father-in-law is watching tonight. He understands preparation. He knows what I'm talking about. You can't just say you want something and then not put in the steps to get where you want to go. And wherever you're going next is going to always require something new. So let's talk about what happens if you don't prepare. And I'm curious before we go on, are any of you in preparation for anything particular? My father-in-law is probably preparing to ride some bike marathon or something because that's what he does for fun. Do you know what I'm saying? Some of you are preparing for big speaking engagements. Some of you are uh, preparing for big tests or hoping for big promotion. I'd be very curious to know exactly what you're preparing for so I can make sure I tailor some of my comments to what you're getting ready for. Let's jump into what happens if you don't prepare. Two main things happen, and they are both painful. The first one, hey, Auntie Janice. The first one that happens if you don't prepare. If you do not prepare, you are not ready when the doors finally open. The doors you've been banging on and kicking down, they finally open, but you haven't been preparing. So what happens is you get through the doors, you get through them, but you're not your most ready self. You see what I'm saying? So the door opens, you get through, you think you've arrived, but truth is you didn't even prepare to be there. So the thing is, here's this big break that just flew open for you, but you weren't really prepared for the big break. And then what happens is you get through the door and you drop the ball, you fumble the big break. It's painful. This thing you've been saying you've wanted forever, this thing you've been wanting, Right, so Lawrence, you're a musician. Patch is your musician. Your first album, both of you are getting ready to release new music projects. If you just said, I want to record a project, and then you book the studio three months down the road, and you don't practice until the day you go in the studio, guess what? You're not coming out with a good finished product. I will guarantee you. Before you get in the studio, you have to do months of practicing to even be ready to do quick takes and retakes. And Lawrence knows what that's like. You're gonna be in there recording over and over and over. So you're gonna need stamina, you're gonna need focus. So that means that every day up until you get in the studio, you've gotta prepare with stamina and focus. You've gotta work on those things. So the worst thing you can have happen is you don't prepare and you still get the big break. You slip through the door and you're not ready for it. You fumble the moment. So here's what really, really sucks. The big break happens, it doesn't have the intended outcome. I'll keep it real here. I've had moments that I've waited for, wanted, and you know what it feels like when you sort of get it and you get through the door 
but it doesn't quite turn out to be what you thought. And so you always are wondering, is this because I didn't prepare or is this just, was it just not my time? Those things keep us up, right, at night. So what you wanna do on the front end is make sure that when things don't turn out the way you want, it has nothing to do with how you did not prepare. So you can always say, okay, the timing wasn't right, but I did my part, right? This other person was deserving, so was I, I did my part, but it was their time to have that moment. There's nothing worse than having a second guess if the reason things didn't work out is because you didn't prepare. When you don't prepare like that, that big break becomes a big disaster, right? And it shows the world that you're actually not ready for your close-up. And let me tell you, when you get a big break, because you never prepared, I'm gonna say that again, for those of you who are just coming back in, we had a little interruption there. The second thing that happens if you don't prepare, this one hurts too, is that the door never even opens in the first place because you never got prepared and you never got in position. So it's kind of like, um, you know those doors that have the sensors on them? You just kind of walk up to them and they open. It's like you're standing in front of that door and you know it's an automatic door. You know it has a sensor, but it's not picking you up. It's not even catching you because you're still too small for the sensor. You didn't prepare and grow large enough for the sensor to even know that you were there so the door stayed glued shut. You don't wanna to be too small for the sensor to detect that it's time for you to walk into your big break. So it's a tough place to be, but there's even grace in that. Do you know that I believe God has such grand purpose for you that he is not willing to risk you fumbling at such a crucial moment? He will even delay you, divinely delay you, because he knows you need more preparation before you're ready to handle the breakthrough. That's a hard one to swallow, but I would much rather be delayed and have to prepare more, and then when the doors open, I can slay it, than to get in there early and fumble, or to not even have the doors ever open in the first place. So I'm curious, those of you just tuning in, hey James, hey Tanya, let me know what you're preparing for. Is there anything in particular that you're getting ready for or are you in any kind of transition? I'm really curious. I always want to know who I'm talking to and what you're going through and what you're living through. We're talking about preparation and how it's not just one thing that you do right before something you're getting ready for. That preparation is actually an entire lifestyle. That you're always preparing for something because you're always going after something. And if you dare to have big vision and big dreams, hey VUCA, if you dare to say you want something big, you need to match the level of your preparation with the level of the breakthrough that you're trying to get. So you can't say you want something huge, but you're not putting in huge effort. And we just said very quickly, I'll review that if you don't prepare, you either show up, the door opens for you and you get through as your most unprepared self, or the doors don't open at all because they can't even sense you right? The automatic sensors say you're too small. You haven't prepared to be big enough to walk into this moment. So why are we preparing? Some of you are like, well, Jade, I don't even have anything that I'm preparing for. Listen, you're not always going to know what you're preparing for. A lot of times you're even going to think you know what you're preparing for. Many of you know this, right? Uh, and you show up in one place and find out you were kind of tricked, right? Divinely tricked to be there so that you could be ready for something else. So a lot of times you're not going to know what you're preparing for. And the worst thing to do is to think, well, nothing I've been asking for is on the horizon. So I can just sit back and wait until the opportunity presents itself. Well, I believe that creates a really vicious uh, catch 22. Because since you're sitting there and waiting and not preparing, the moment is also not advancing towards you. But once you start preparing, be, we're going to talk about that, that healthy body example. Once you start preparing, then the opportunity moves. It's like attraction. The opportunity is attracted to the preparation. Hey, Anitra, come on in. So preparation creates momentum. It releases movement. It allows your opportunity pro to progress towards you because the opportunity says, she's ready for me. You see? You have to prepare big if you want big. That's right. That's my auntie, y'all. She's smart. She's a principal. Yes, she is. Prep mode for what? You're not always going to know what you're preparing for. So here's what you prepare when you don't know what you're preparing for. Three things. If you're preparing for something bigger, 
then you need to check and see if you have any small thinking. If you have any small thinking, you automatically know I got to get rid of that because I need a new mindset to go into the next big thing. Denise is preparing to introduce an audience of 600 plus people to the launch of your ministry. Oh my gosh, talk about preparation. So Denise can't afford to have small thinking because she's not getting ready to introduce herself to a small group of people. She's getting ready to introduce herself to a large audience. So she has to prepare to become larger. If you are leading, this is not an arrogant statement. If you are leading a group of people, you must be larger than them in mindset, in your mode of operation, in your behavior. You must have something for them to aspire to grow into. Or else, why are we here? So Denise would have to prepare. She said, look at her, look at her life and say, do I have any small thinking? Because we know that if you're getting ready for something new, right? If you're getting ready for something that's coming next, it's always going to require something new. Those of you who are just joining, we said that you must have new mindset. So if you're not knowing what exactly you're preparing for, you don't have any specific opportunity on the horizon, I challenge you not to worry about the fact that nothing's on the calendar in stone. Opportunity always exists. We just don't know exactly what it looks like. But if you start preparing, the opportunity moves towards the preparation. So the first thing you do is look for small thinking, and then you look for the new mindset that you're going to need to begin to open those doors. If you don't know what to prepare for, you look for small doing. So we found small thinking. We're going to look for small doing because certain actions open certain doors, right? Mine is preparing to change careers. Or is she really preparing for her first real career, right? So she's in what you call transition. She's going to have to start looking at all the ways of behavior and doing she's had in the past and say, what has been beneficial? Now, this is painful inventory, y'all. What has been beneficial and what has hindered me? And then she's going to focus on what has hindered and say, what new ways of doing things am I going to have to learn now before before the big opportunity comes. Currently standing by for Hurricane Irma, should be on a 100 mile bike ride that was canceled due to the storm. But guess what, Paul, your endurance is not for naught. Because I can tell you from watching the survivors of Hurricane Harvey, that when you are spared from Irma, like I know that you will be, we will need your endurance to help the people who have not been as lucky. My church has been helping survivors of Hurricane Harvey since it hit, and they will do the same thing at least through the month of September. When I tell you the lines have not gotten any shorter and the needs have not gotten any smaller. People's homes still need to be rebuilt. You know, these things kind of remind me of um, when someone has a death in their family and we're very sympathetic when the person first dies. We're very comforting to the widow. Uh, we're very comforting to the people left behind for about three or four days, maybe a week, and then we get on back to our lives. But the truth is those people are going to need help for a long time. They have to learn to live a whole new life. So your preparation has not been for naught. Those of you who think you're preparing for one thing and that opportunity disappears, do not lament the fact that you put in that work because that preparation will pay off in another area that you weren't expecting. You're gonna be able to run 100 miles for another reason or ride 100 miles. Paul, just so you know, we found out today that there's a guy who's been helping with the hurricane recovery efforts. He's been riding his bike 30 miles each way every day to our church to help survivors. So get your bike ready, <laughs> you might need it. Third thing, if you do not know what you're preparing for, we know you can look for small thinking and fix that. You can look for small doing and change your actions. You can look for small behavior. Small behavior are just those little ways of being that are really self-sabotaging. So B. Gay, who is an amazing septuagenarian, is that in your 70s is what they call that. I only mention that because she does not look, she does not look, man, a day over maybe 42, maybe. This lady looks incredible, um, body of an athlete, and she puts time into that because her health is important. So you wouldn't, her, she doesn't mind telling you her age because nothing about her says 
that she has aged physically. Everything about her still has life in it because she has determined that's an area of focus. Hey, Stephen, come on in. That's an area of focus and constant preparation. She's lived a lifestyle. Let me tell you about good health. People will think that that stuff doesn't matter and they'll try to make you think that people who focus so much on going to the gym or being healthy are vain. Let me tell you what, if you really want to be a high achieving uh, mover and shaker, you're going to need endurance, you're going to need good health, good health, and you're going to need to be able to have stamina that doesn't run out. You're going to need to know what it is and what your body means when it says you need to take a rest. And you're going to have to go longer than most people go. You're going to have to run faster, jump higher, all those things. So if you don't think your health is key to your next breakthrough, here's a test. I dare you for the next month to focus on one area of your health. Improve that area and see if there's not breakthrough in another area of your life. Because if you're gonna to have to run faster where you're going next, whether that's literally or figuratively, it's not coming towards you if it knows you're gonna be exhausted in the first two minutes. Test it out. Focus on that area and watch opportunity come towards you. So what you're gonna do when you don't know what you're preparing for is you're just gonna analyze your current issues, frustrations, conflicts, and struggles. And in those, like Maya was saying, your future gives you hints, in them are hints at how you are already being refined. I'm going to give you an example. Um, this is a good one. If you've been struggling with something like depression, you got to figure out what that's about. Is it chemical? Is it psychological? Is it nutritional? If you just say, well, it's just what I deal with and you don't figure out what it is, you're going to constantly struggle with it without any solutions. And you're going to have to know where you are headed because where you're going next that depression, that sickness, whatever that condition you're dealing with is probably going to be a liability for you even more so at the next level. So sometimes your breakthrough is being delayed because of issues you haven't investigated, you haven't dealt with for whatever reason. Talk about eating habits, right? What do they say about um, your eating habits will tell us how you really feel about yourself. Hey, Dana. Congratulations, Dana. You're in DGC. That's a Designer Growth Club member who just joined. Those of you who are tuning in right now, today we officially open the doors to Designer Growth Club. Check it out at designergrowthclub.com. That's all I'll say for now, except that it is an amazing program for visionary women looking to do things bigger and bolder. Go check it out. She says, hi. So what I was saying is how you eat, for instance, is going to tell me what you really think about yourself. It's going to tell you, tell opportunity if you're fit for the service that's ahead. It's going to tell you if you're ready and you have the stamina to be able to pursue. So those are areas you can prepare even when you don't know what you're preparing for. What if anybody out there in the middle of conflict, dealing with people-ish? I know Steven has to deal with stuff at work sometimes. All of us have people issues at one point or another. You should examine your conflict. And then instead of saying, what is this person? What's wrong with this person? I dare you to ask, what do I need to learn about myself in the middle of this confrontation? Because you can't fix the person anyway, right? So I dare you to focus on yourself and whatever conflict and contention you're in, because I guarantee you, whatever you're dealing with at this level is a hint at the kind of conflict you'll need to be able to figure out at the next level. And then lastly, if you're wondering what does all this have to do? Like all those other areas, eating, thinking, behavior. I just want to focus on breakthrough in my business. What does this have to do? Let me tell you what. You can't handle breakthrough in your business if you're struggling with issues you haven't dealt with. You can't handle breakthrough in your business if you're not healthy like you need to be. You can't handle breakthrough in your business if you're constantly constantly being ruled over by toxic people or if you're toxic yourself. Your breakthrough would not last. And you want to prepare in a way so that when you finally get where you're going, which by the way, there's always another level, but when you finally get to that next level, you're able to sustain it. So all that to say, there's always something that needs growth, always something that needs upgrading. And no matter how unrelated it seems, those other areas when you strengthen them, they instantly create breakout in another area, okay? All right, so we're gonna finish up here with when you don't know what you're preparing for, like I said, you prepare for everything else. But I promised you that I would tell you how I prepared. If you saw the post earlier this week, hey, Jawanda, come on in, I hope you'll watch the replay. 
What I said earlier was I was shocked. I'll go on all these big speaking engagements. In fact, tomorrow I leave for uh, an amazing women's conference in Stockton, California. So I'm the opening keynote speaker. None other than Sheryl Sandberg of Facebook fame is the main keynote speaker. And then another lady, Karen Lampkin, one of the heads of Bank of America in California, is the final keynote speaker. So there I am on the stage with all of these big names. We each have expertise in our own areas. And I assume that we're all gonna slay, right? Usually they're paying us quite a hefty fee to be there. So I assume all of these professional speakers like myself prepare pretty intensely. So I'm always shocked when I come off the stage and the presenter will say, oh my gosh. And I'm thinking they're gonna tell me how amazing I played or man, that was so inspirational, or boy, your PowerPoint was incredible. Do you know they look at me and with a straight face, they say, I can't believe how prepared you were. I'm like, prepared? You know how much you paid me to be here? I should be prepared. Like, in the least, I should be prepared. I can't tell you how many times major Fortune 500 companies will tell me about how they brought in a six-figure speaker who was not prepared how they brought in a major celebrity who was not prepared, did not take the time to know their company inside out, did not ask who the demographic they were speaking to. And maybe it's as a musician, uh, Steven Smoot of Ravinia fame will know out there, you have to know who you're playing to. You have to know who your audience is. If I go from Rachmaninoff to rap, does this audience really want to hear rap or do they really want to hear Rachmaninoff? I'm going to have to focus for the room that I'm in. But I found out a lot of speakers weren't doing their prep work. And then I realized that even when they did prepare, I prepared very differently. So I wanna tell you a few ways that I prepare. The main thrust behind our, how I prepare is I noticed that most people prepare for what they can see, right? So if those of you are speakers out there, rock my off. If you are speakers or you're wanting to become a professional speaker or for those of you like Denise who are opening up and launching up ministries, Many people will go in and they'll prepare and they'll say, well, who's the demographic? You know, tell me the mission statement of your company and maybe what's the theme of the program. So those of you who are speakers, you know that you get on the phone with the presenter who's about to bring you out there and you talk through the program. Well, I don't ask the basic questions because usually I can find that out for myself. I prepare based not on what I can see, like what's on the program, what the theme is, who's in the room in terms of the title. I prepare based on what I can't see. So what I do is I, the first thing I ask uh, an organization that's bringing me in to speak is I say, what are the biggest fears of the people in the room? What's the stuff that's really keeping them up at night? Sure, you brought me in to inspire and motivate them about reaching the bottom line or breaking records, but what do they really care about and what are they really afraid of? Hey, Calvin. And I'm always shocked that they're shocked at that question, but then they get really honest and tell me, well, here's what really concerns them. And then I ask, what's really going on internally in the company? How, do, how does this set of employees really feel about this set? How do people really feel? These are the things that I can't see when I walk in a room. These are not the things that they send to me on my preparation sheet that the company will send you. I ask them, what hasn't been working for you? You see, these are things that people don't normally tell you up front. So I like to prepare by asking the unexpected questions so that I can do the unexpected thing when I get there. And then I ask them, what is your audience expecting from me? What do they think I'm going to do? And usually they say, well, you know, you're a classical pianist, so they probably think you're going to like play a little Mozart and talk a little bit and then play a little Chopin, which if any of you have seen my performances, know that's not at all what I do. So I like to know what they're expecting so that I can blow away the expectations, not manage them, but exceed the expectations. And then lastly, the main question I ask to a presenter, and it usually throws them for a bit, but it's the most important one. I say, what has been the missing piece at this event that you're bringing me into in all the years that you've done it? At the end of every year, what is it you always say, I wish we had this or I wish we'd done this? And then when they tell me that, I get to being about the business of delivering that thing that they say was always missing. Then what happens is when you prepare by what you can't see, when you ask the hard questions and do the real work, when you get in the room, that's when real impact happens. 
and people feel like you prepared for them. You know, I find out who is in the room, but I want to know what, not just what their titles are, but what are they dealing with in everyday life? When they leave the office at your big Fortune 500 company, what are they going home to? What's their struggle? What's work-life balance like for them? What are they staying up at late, late at night worrying about? And then I address those things. So then what happens is we have this moment, right, where the audience feels like, oh my gosh, she's talking to me. How does she know this about me? And then they feel this amazing connection, like I really was brought in just to deal with what they are dealing with. When you have that kind of connection, your preparation pays off in way more ways than you ever could have planned for or expected because now you're reaching people on a heart level, you are touching them deeply and not just inspiring them for a moment, but making them rethink everything always ask the question why are you really there so when you prepare you're wanting to know what can't I see and look for those things and figure out how to prepare for what you can't see and then you want to find out why are you really there anything you're preparing for whatever you're getting ready for don't just look at it as a job title don't just look at it as an amazing performance or an amazing ministry or speaking opportunity say why am I really there for this moment in time right now and why am I the only person that can deliver on this thing. When you get that, man, you just work backwards and you say, if I know I am designed to activate people, how do I prepare for activation? If I know that I am designed to empower people in a certain way, how do I prepare myself in order to be able to empower? If I know that they are counting on me, if they say the missing piece has been energy or wow factor, that tells me I better not show up being boring. I better make sure there is wow factor in my show. Yeah? so. Those of you who are going to watch the replay, I see some of you are coming in now as we're getting ready to wrap up. We've just been talking about how you prepare when you don't even know what to prepare for. When you don't know what to prepare for, prepare everything else. That includes your mindset, it includes your, your thinking, your behavior, the way that you do things. Anything that's small must be bigger because if whatever you're going after next is going to require something new, you can always start there. So those of you who just come on, you know this is an amazing day. We just opened up Designer Growth Club. That is a new, one-of-a-kind club for visionary women. Sorry, guys. Sorry. But your wives and girlfriends and sisters can tell you how amazing it is, okay? So it's something we just opened up. It's a way to have ongoing connection between a community of visionary women who are looking to do things bigger and bolder. You're going to check it out at designergrowthclub.com. It's officially open. We get underway October 1st, but you want to make sure you join before then. So please check it out. Thank you, Gail Force, for calling this all. check it out let us know what you think and uh, I look forward to hearing your thoughts on this live video this live episode as well have a great night talk to you soon bye